welcome to Expedition Networking, a special segment of the Networking RX podcast. I'm Frank Egan, founder and president of Amspirit Business Connections and your host for this program. For those of you who are familiar, on the Networking RX podcast, we share information and have conversations with experts, such as authors, researchers, and social scientists. And all of these programs are aimed at helping you learn how to become better at building professional relationships and understanding why they work. In this Expedition Networking segment, however, we're going to bring on successful entrepreneurs and unique professionals and explore their networking adventure and learn how they used relationships to create lasting success. Today on Expedition Networking, we have Mark McNally, who's the founder and chief nobody of Nobody Studios, along with Barry O'Reilly, who's the Cheek Chief Incubation Officer at Nobody Studios. Barry, Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for having us. I am a little bit cheeky, Frank, as well. Don't don't be uh, don't be afraid to say that. Okay. <laughs> um, well, let's jump in. I uh, I want to take a moment and or have you guys take a moment and kind of explain Nobody Studios and what it is, and then I really want to kind of listen to the journey as to how you have pulled this together, how you've you know, utilized relationships. Uh, we met through Sajel Thacker, who is part of your advisory or board or however you want to term it. And, um, and obviously she's, she's gotten involved. Uh, as I shared before we hit record, uh, you know, I could talk to, I could talk to a hundred property casualty insurance agents or financial advisors or realtors and get the same story this is a unique business and this has kind of had a unique journey as to how to piece it all together. So I don't know, Mark, you want to kick it off and share the share about nobody studio? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so myself and, and most of our co-founders have just got a pretty extensive background in doing startup company creation. Um, I go back to the mid nineties where my first uh, company coming out of the military, I found a few guys that were, I uh, thought they had this idea to connect buyers and suppliers on this new thing called the internet. And uh, that became actually a thing. And we actually built a company, grew it to 800 employees and took it public on the NASDAQ in 99, which was a, a pretty interesting, good year to go public. So um, that kind of got me hooked. And I've been doing startups ever since. Um, been involved with uh, 14 since then as a CEO founder um, and every possible outcome you could imagine from complete failure and, and bankruptcy to some other exits that were exciting. Um, but been in this space for a long time, really cross industries and, and the founders uh, of the studio as well. And the, nobody studios was really created a couple of years ago around this idea that while well, I've been a part of this for decades, we all collectively started to see that venture creation was kind of going wrong. You know, there's a lot of money going into startups these days. And a lot of people are celebrating that as a victory um, from founders to investors, they're celebrating these, these valuations, but they're not actually outcomes. Nobody sold a company. Nobody has, you know, cash in a suitcase. And I started to feel very passionately that I was starting to see the same kind of movie that I've watched two or three times before in my career, you know, big frothy markets, people getting too big evaluations, money being thrown around everywhere that all of a sudden the money stops. And it's this really painful, awkward, crummy time for years as good companies die because they got overcapitalized and people are scrambling around trying to find their way. And most investors write off the last couple of years of their investments. And it's just, I'm like watching this right now going, really? <laughs> we're doing it again? Um, except we're doing it at a whole different level where we're probably doing it orders of magnitude larger. I mean, and there's some ironic reasons for it. You know, Wall Street money used to stay in Wall Street and it was bankable companies and the venture guys did this stuff. But now Wall Street's brought all their big money into venture and it's just gotten things wrong. And, and that started this kind of intellectual exercise saying, okay, okay, it's wrong. What else is wrong? And we started finding all the things are wrong. And there's a, we don't think, you know, people, people are not put in front of the venture process enough. Um, it's usually an investor driven thing. And so we said, there's ways we can change that. We can um, get really aggressive and empowering the crowd and letting all walks of life be part of venture creation, not just a few people that happen to go to the right school and, and the good old boys network. Um, mm -hmm. We actually said, not only is that a cool thing to do, that's actually kind of a superpower if you get it right. So we trademarked this idea of crowd infused. So everything we do from how we conceive of companies to how we validate them, vet them, do quality assurance, come up with pricing models, branding, launching, everything, uh, recruiting, it's all in enabling with the, the crowd. Um, so I often get asked why nobody studios, why is it called that? 
And I usually say it's because we knew from the very beginning that getting this right meant we'd become really a network or a community of peoples and, and passions worldwide of all walks in life, all age, every economic background you can imagine. And if you got that right, you're tapping into something that's especially coming off of the pandemic, mm-hmm. where I just think it's really powerful is that people are wanting to wake up with a reason to get out of bed again and go change the world and belief that they can actually do it with this vehicle. And so that's certainly what we've tried to create. We've had a great run in a couple of years and we'll be the first venture studio that'll be crowdfunded. So we expect to have thousands of investors worldwide and their passions, their networks and their ideas. Um, You know, I've had large sophisticated investors say, why go through all that hassle for the crowdfunding? You know, we can just get a couple of people to write big checks. Um, And I said, well, I'll take the big checks. But the reality of it is that's our superpower. Getting the crowd and views in this means that, you know, I always say like, I, you get 10,000 people who are nobodies around the world. Um, you know, I dare you to bet against us. And so, you know, we're, uh, we're having fun trying to change the world. It's gnarly and audacious. We got a goal to do hundred companies in five years. Um, we're not passive investors. So we're not a traditional venture capitalist. We're what's called a venture studio. So we actually roll up our sleeves. We create companies. We're owners. We're founders of them. We're technologists. We're writing code. We're creating marketing campaigns. Um, and we're trying to reinvent a way of doing this company creation thing faster, better, and at a broader scale. Um, and we're also very global in nature. So we already have nobodies around the world. And, um, you know, I wouldn't put it past us to create a company in an overseas market, build it, make it a successful company and exit it and never bring it to North America. It could, you know, it could happen in Brazil or China or somewhere. So, um, yeah, you can call us contrarian for a uh, having fun kind of trying to reinvent this, but it's, it's based on a lot of lessons and scars and perspective over the last couple of decades and what the opportunities are right now. All right. Now you've, you've obviously flipped the script on the whole venture game. Uh, maybe Barry, you can jump in on this. I mean, how are you go- going about pulling people in? Cause when people hear venture, they're thinking eight zeros, nine zeros, a lot of zeros. Um, and I mean that in a good sense, you know, a million dollars, a, a billion dollars. Barry? Yeah, well, it's um, it's sort of a little bit to the point Mark made about uh, this crowd infusion idea for us. You know, t- typically uh, venture capital is probably a world most people feel um, is a gated community. Uh, as you're sort of alluding to, if, if you want to be a limited partner, invest in a fund, it's typically a million dollar investment just to play or right? just even to get a stake in the game, which means it marginalizes a huge population uh, of the world. And, and one of the reasons, as Mark alluded to, about why we wanted to do crowdfunding is we wanted to lower that uh, barrier to entry. We wanted to create access for all. Right. So. The reason with a crowdfunding and, and, you know, there's a lot of work that we're going through to get be one of the first, if not the first venture studio to be equity crowdfunded is it means anyone with a couple of hundred bucks can get involved in the game, right? They can actually own or own a stake in the studio and uh, you know, see upside from every company we create forever. So we're really proud of the fact that we're actually sort of giving people access to this um, innovation opportunity company creation opportunity and wealth creation opportunity at the same time. Uh, so, th- so that's what we're trying to change the, the game in a way, right? Like bring more people into the system. Um, you know, if you, you'll often hear us talk about like, we don't believe the next Facebook is going to be created in Silicon Valley. It's probably a, a, you know, a young girl in Delhi playing Minecraft. And we believe that how, if we can bring those people um, or create a place where they can take their best ideas uh, bring them to life, uh, guidance and expertise from the studio or people who've built many companies hundreds of times, that, that gives us a massive unfair advantage about being successful, right? And when somebody owns a piece of the studio, when they have new ideas, you know, the, the natural place for them to bring them is to the studio to, to make them happen, right? So we talk a lot about uh, talent, influence, and capital is really what we're looking for. Talent is just great people. They can bring their ideas, contribute to the companies we're working on, have their own ideas, potentially bring them to life. Influence is what we believe everyone has influence. If you love or listen even to this podcast and think what we're doing is interesting, fun, you know, share it. Tell one person about it. Right? Influence your network to to your uh, show's purpose about what we're doing and how they could be part of it. 
And capital means uh, investing and, and actually having a, a piece of the pie, a stake in the game and, and potential upside, whether that's a couple of hundred bucks in a crowdfunding, right up to angel investments uh, as well. So there's lots of opportunities to work and play with us. And I think that's one of the things we're most proud of is that we're, we're trying to make access for all for everybody. And, and I think it's really resonating with folks. You know, as you guys talk, and, and Barry, this might not mean anything to you. Um, so I'll give it some context. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, as I hear you guys talk, all I can think about is the Green Bay Packers. And the reason that Green Bay Packers is a na- uh, National Football League team, they are owned by the community. And when they need money, I mean, people literally buy shares in the Green Bay Packers that are, and it says right on the certificates, you can't sell this. There's no value to this. You just have pride of ownership um, and people and, and they've essentially crowdfunded a professional sporting team. Um, and yeah, I know people who are shareholders and they're just they're They are so proud. They know the money's gone. It's, there's no value to it. But there's and I realize this is different for you guys, but it's kind of the same thing. I just I see I think you said a, a couple hundred dollars. I mean, that's a lot of people out there that could put in a couple hundred dollars, millions, a billion people. Um, yeah, and, and we'll we'll take them all. To be honest, you know, like yeah. that's uh, that's what it's all about, right? Is that um, you know, like and Mark will have some great opinions here too as well. You know, the the, the challenge that we have is not ideas, right? There's there's hundreds, probably billions of ideas out there that people have and could be worked on. The, the challenge is talent, is finding people who can align around a mission that they believe in and bring their skills, their abilities to bear in, in some sort of context, right? A company or what we're, we think more is almost like a community, a community of nobodies that can actually go after these ideas. We talk a lot about crowd infusion, as Mark said, in terms of uh, trademarking even that idea. Right. So when we have new ideas, we want to have a crowd of nobodies where we're like, what do you think about this? Is this a good idea? Are you interested in it? Can you work on it? Do you have skills in it? And let the crowd sort of guide and give us feedback on should we work on it? Do we have the talent in our network to make it happen? We can start working on it, then build the first prototype, ship it back to that community again. Give us feedback. What works? What doesn't? What's missing? What would make it better? And then when you launch these products, then you've got uh, uh, basically the biggest megaphone you can dream of to turn up the noise on, hey, have you seen this new company that I'm a part of? Uh, it's great. You should, be, you should be part of this too as well. So again, it's one of our sort of secret um, superpowers, but fundamental to our strategy as a business is to bring more people into the community of nobodies that we have. And um, Mark, what, 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 share a little bit more in your own perspective there as well. Um, yeah, no, I thought you were on a great track. I'm sorry. You had me <laughs> mesmerized. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Barry's killing it. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's, it's the powerful part for us is just watching people connect the dots in terms of true ownership and saying, Hey, I'm not just on the sidelines. I'm not passive. They can reach out to any one of us and say, I have an idea. They can get into a debate. They can get into a brainstorming session. Um, and when you're part of creating something, when you're part of having an impact on or input on it, it's just a different level of, you know, of getting the word out there, of spreading the word. All these people are part of what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, I know that networking is a big part of your, you know, talk track, you know, Frank. And for us, that's really what this is at a, just a grand scale. Yeah. You know, on one hand, it could be, you know, people tweeting or posting something on social media and kind of bringing people to the journey. But you know, a lot of the folks that have been a part of our journey so far and are kind of key inside stakeholders from our angel investors and such. This is some really amazing, fascinating people that, you know, I could geek out just thinking about Barry's network. I could just geek out thinking about my own, thinking about yours. But when you start adding them up and you start to watch these dots being connected, you start to get to the spot where you're like, we're kind of like one phone call away from most places or most people we might want to get to. Yeah. Um, and so connecting those dots properly, figuring out how to open those doors, um, figuring out how to be, you know, very judicious at the end of the day on when you ask for those favors. And, but it's kind of happened just organically. You know, we, one of our core principles of the studio is transparency. 
Um, and that came from me doing diagnostics of every company I was a part of. And I realized how much time we spend on trying to craft the narrative. Mm -hmm. What are we going to tell this quarry this quarter? What are we going to say to investors? What are we going to say to employees in the next meeting? Um, and we're really trying to, as much as possible, push the boundaries of just say, look, this is what we got right this week. This is what we got wrong. This is what's keeping us up at night. This is what's freaking us out. Here's where we need help. And just doing that consistently. And, you know, that's what's happening within our inside stakeholders. People we wouldn't even know could contribute somewhere are saying, oh, you know, I know you think of me as the medical professional, but my brother is a, you know, crypto specialist. And I heard you're looking for somebody there. And so just watching people reveal their own networks and what they can bring to the table by just embracing transparency has also been pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. To me, this is, this is exciting. It's powerful. I've, I've had a number of conversations with other networking types um, on this podcast and just in general. And one theme that comes out, which I think you guys are really kind of touching upon is we really have the ability to solve all the world's problems. I mean, the, the information's out there and the ideas are out there. The difference now is that the ideas don't have to go through, um, they don't have to go through New York. They don't have to go through San Francisco. They don't have to go through London or you know, name a big city where, hey, you need to go talk to somebody here. Barry, you said it, you know, the next Facebook's coming out of Delhi or could, you know, um, yeah. or wherever. Um, Gary, Indiana, name a name a city where there's bright people who all of a sudden have access not only to capital, but to, you know, worldwide influence. And I guess the, the collective talent of everybody you guys are, are pulling together. Um, to me, that's exciting to, to see what happens from this. I've got to believe that other people are going to be doing it, but Hey, you're first. Um, that's great. Yeah. You know, I look, I think being a part of 14 ventures funded startups, um, you know, going back from my very first one, my first time I actually looked at a VC's website or material probably back then there were just folders. Right. Um, they all say the same thing, right? We connect our network of people and our portfolios work together and, um, and I know that's all well-intentioned and all my brethren in the VC world, you know, it's, it's well-intentioned. The problem is there's no incentives. And so once you've made those investments, a lot of the portfolio companies see themselves as a little bit competitive. They're often pitted against each other. There's no incentives to share technology or ideas across them. And the reality of it is the venture game is hard. You got to look at 300 deals a year and you're going to figure out 10 you might go deep on and you're going to take two or three to your partners and you're going to invest in one. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that every day, all day long. Um, you actually don't have a whole lot of time to go backwards and figure out how to help your portfolio companies. You're just, you know what the scheduled board meeting is. So it, the intention is there, but it's hard to actually come through with it. What we've done to change that is that we basically have cross incentivization across all of our companies. So when you're working on one of our new codes, you actually own stock across all of them. And so that really kind of creates that, you know, crits to effect of the talent really wants to help each other. They don't mind going on loan for an hour or half a day or whatever. And they actually see it as an intellectual exercise to expand their own thinking. And you were right. seeing that be a really fun part of watching this kind of family be built because, you know, I don't think it's a secret if you read the headlines today that talent's kind of becoming the battleground, you know, it's harder and harder to find people. Um, we're always looking for great people, but I also have been very, pleased with how many really fantastic people want to work with us. And I think it's also, you know, one of the secrets to our kind of networking has been, I like, I like to say that there's lots of right answers. We don't go and say, this is what we need from you. Do this. Yes or no. We're not heavy pitch. We're not heavy handed. It's just not the way we're wired to begin with. We've embraced this idea that we're telling our story and we let people self-select to that journey. And it could be that they contribute an hour a month, that they're just a supporter when we need them, or they could be all in and be a founder and investor and putting 70 hours into us. And everywhere in between is just glorious for us. As long as it fits what they want to and can bring to the table, it's great for us. And, and that's what I was going to say. One of the reasons why I think we're able to attract talent is we've got some really fantastic people working at fantastic J jobs, companies they could never leave if they wanted to. They just make too much money. You know, the golden handcuffs are there but they're giving us 10 or 15 hours on the side, you know, where the side hustle for their passions or ideas. So something else can kind of come to life. And I just think that that openness is something that is just truly aligned with the current state of human nature <laughs> um, versus 10 or 15 years ago that, you know, if you tell your corporation, you're in a, a garage band on the weekends, they consider that a distraction. And now I'm like, that's glorious. What else are you doing? Like we right. need to embrace human nature to get the best out of the people that we work with. I, no, I think there's uh there's a lot to that. 
most people are working 40 hours a week, but they're awake for what? A hundred hours a week. So there's, there's 60 hours there. Barry's smiling. Cause he's, he's in the Philippines. He's up at 4 a.m. <laughs> well, I'm also thinking the 40 hours a week they're due and how many are they really checked in for as well? Exactly. Right? Sure. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. Right. And, um, you know, to, to the point Mark was making there is I think the world we live in now is people have like side hustles that they would love to turn into businesses that they would love to explore. You know, I can't tell you how many calls I have a week with folks who are like, I've got this great idea, but, you know, I, I can't I can't quit my job and go after it or I, I, or I don't know how or if I'm nervous to do it. And in many ways, the studio is like a perfect on-ramp for those people because you you can de-risk your idea by bringing it into the studio and working with people on it for a couple hours a week to see if it's got legs. Like, can it take off? And if it doesn't, no worries, right? You've, you've, you've tested that out. But I guarantee you going through that process, you'll spin up five or six more other ideas that you want to go on. And really, then you get into the habit of just like going after ideas and finding out what works and what doesn't. And that's fabulous, right? And if one of them takes off, then you've got a rocket ship you can jump on and and let go of the job that you probably is your day job for now to go do something you're really passionate about. So I, I don't think there's any better incentive than pursuing what your purpose is, the things you believe in that you would enjoy in life. And I think the studio is a great opportunity to sort of do that. The question I would have now, I guess, to kind of, as we wind down here, um, how might people be get invested? How might people bring ideas to you? Uh, those are probably two separate tracks. Um, you know, it, I think influence kind of takes care of itself when people are financially invested and got their talent invested, then they're naturally going to want to apply their influence to make it all work. Um, but how would people? Yeah. First of all, I think they're, they're all, um, independent kind of a la carte choices right and i say that because there's a lot of people who we consider awesome influencers who are friends of the studio but couldn't put an hour a week into what we're doing mm -hmm. they just love us they'll support us and they'll help you know spread the word when you're talking about people who have millions of followers you know single post you know means a lot um so i think there is a certain category of people who just say hey i, I believe in this and i want to be part of the influence um you know, and then the, you know, the talent is obviously, like I said, the spectrum I presented and then capital is, is you know, probably from the crowdfunding to people who are um, angels and even more sophisticated doing, you know, larger type investments. So um, the best way, first of all, we're all very accessible. So, you know, you go to Nobody Studios and register, but we're market Nobody Studios and Barry at NobodyStudios.com and, you know, easy to reach out anytime. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate your, uh, your time, both of your time uh, on the program today and, uh, very insightful to me. Very exciting. Um, let's see where it goes. Sounds good. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Thanks for having us Thanks, on. Frank. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is the copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.